Hi, Mike Crop Hunter here and I've got another question from one of my viewers and I'd like to respond to this uh, question. If you're new to this channel, uh, what I talk about, I talk a lot about microscopes here, but not only, but also about microbiology related uh, issues. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in topics like this, then I would like to invite you to subscribe to this channel. And uh, I have a question which relates uh, to the freezing of bacteria here and it's a pretty long question and uh, I think I'm going to also take a little bit of time to answer the question. Here it is. I read a theory that melting glaciers uh, cause old viruses uh, coming back to life. Please uh, take a sample of water, observe it under the microscope to make sure it has some bacteria and viruses. Then freeze the infected water for a few days at minus 30 degrees. Then unfreeze it and test it again to see if it still has bacteria and viruses. Could you please do that to see if the theory could be true? This theory seems strange to me because I know people take fresh fish and freeze it for three days in order to kill parasites and viruses. After three days, they unfreeze the fish and eat it raw or smoked. So is it safe to eat fish that has been frozen and unfrozen? And is it safe to drink water that has been frozen and then unfrozen? Just in case it has been infected before being frozen. Thank you in advance. So first of all, thank you very much uh, for the question and uh, to give you a short answer, it is the following. While it is possible that freezing might kill off some bacteria, it is not a safe way to disinfect food. Honestly not, always boil your food. So, but I'm going to give you now a more detailed uh, explanation here. Well, first of all, uh, I have to correct something in your question, otherwise some people are going to write comments about this. Uh, viruses are not considered alive, uh, so that is the uh, first aspect. Uh, they, are, they do not have their own metabolism. They need to infect a cell in order to reproduce, and for this uh, reason, because they're not able to reproduce on their own, they're uh, per definition not considered alive. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, is that with light microscopes here, it is not possible uh, to see viruses in the first place. Uh, so my answer that I'm going to give you now is going to be centered um, around cells, uh, bacteria uh, specifically. So first of all, um, the answer is uh, don't always have, do boil your feet food to kill uh, bacteria off. Um, freezing is not a, a safe way. As a matter of fact, it's not a way at all um, to make uh, sure that food is edible. What happens during the freezing process? Um, when when water freezes it expands and uh, if the water now expands or freezes inside a cell then uh, the expanding water the frozen water the ice crystals they will break the cell open and crack the cell open and this causes the contents of the cell to be spilled out and this of course uh, kills the cell and this is indeed something that happens uh, and uh, I for example when I was still studying microbiology this was indeed a method that we've used to break cells bacterial cells open so that we could get the DNA out for DNA analysis. Yeah, so what we've done is, is we've uh, had the, the, the cells, the bacteria cells in small vials, plastic vials, and we dropped the whole vials with the liquid and the cells and the bacteria. We dropped it into very quickly into liquid nitrogen at minus 100 something degrees. Um, and this very rapidly froze the cells and then we uh, thawed it up again and we repeated the process a few times. And this cracked many of the cells open and the, the DNA got out and we could analyze the DNA. So yes, this uh, freezing is able to, um, uh, to break and to kill cells and bacteria, but uh, not enough and not all of them um, to the extent that, that you can make now food that has spoiled or contains pathogens on it, not to the extent that you're able to make this now uh, safe to eat. And the reason is, is that um, even if you are able to kill off, let's say 99.9% .9 of the bacteria this way, we just assume that, um, if you have millions of bacteria around and you kill, or billions even, and if, if you kill off 99.9% .9 of the bacteria, then you still have uh, uh, millions of bacteria left over. Because uh, when we're dealing with very, very large numbers, uh, then um, essentially we, um, yeah, this 99.9% actually doesn't make uh, much of a difference in that sense. And in some cases, a very small number of bacteria would be of already sufficient to cause it uh, to become ill, okay? So that is simply simply something I just wanna uh, clear, uh, clarify here. If you've got billions of bacteria around and you kill off 99.9, .9, you do the math, you still have millions left over, right? So um, th this is basically the thing that I just want to say here that uh, 
killing uh, bacteria this way is not a safe way. Um, however, it is also possible um, to use freezing uh, to actually preserve bacteria. And look what I have here. In this little sachet, you can buy this uh, over Amazon or from other shops. Uh, there are yogurt bacteria in here and they are freeze dried. This means that uh, the bacteria uh, were um, harvested in the centrifuge usually um, and to remove the liquid and then the bacteria were frozen and, and the frozen bacteria were then placed in a vacuum chamber uh, to remove the water. Uh, it's called freeze drying. This astronaut food is made in a similar way. Um, I don't know if you've already eaten freeze dried strawberries. There's even freeze dried ice cream, uh, believe it or not. So the, the stuff that you want to preserve is, is frozen first and then placed in a vacuum chamber and this kind of pulls out all of the water and then you have it uh, preserved. And so on these freeze dried bacteria in here, are still act, become active when you uh, add again in this case milk to it. Okay, so it did not kill off all of them. Maybe this process killed off several of them, but not all of them. I mean, we're using this in in microbiology uh, to preserve uh, bacterial cultures over a long time, even. So you see that freezing alone is not uh, is, is not going to work. And as a matter of fact, um, also goldfish, for example, um, they are able to withstand even being frozen in a lake. Okay, because in their cell in their cells. They have a, a certain substance which prevents the water from crystallizing um, evidently and this uh, kind of uh, allows them to survive um, even in a frozen state. Um, so that's simply something where that I wanted to mention here and last uh, but not least there is another thing that I want to address here is, is the question is, is is it possible to actually do a so-called bacterial count um, under the microscope to determine um, whether uh, there are yeah now less bacteria present um, after the freezing like I, I take a sample and I I put it on a slide of, of water and like in this case and then I freeze it and then I put it again under the microscope and then am I able to then see that there are less bacteria present and the answer is um, yes and no. Uh, I need to explain this again. Generally, um, when you see a cell, a bacterium or a cell under the microscope, uh, especially bacteria, you don't know whether it's alive or not. Okay? Um, it could be dead bacterium that you see um, or it could be alive and simply because it's not moving does not mean that it's dead. Um, so that is uh, one aspect. You have to basically do a so-called a cell plating. That means you have to take the water, put it on nutrient medium. You have to count the colonies because then you only get the cells that are actually alive. However, when a cell breaks open and spills its contents, uh, then it's also more difficult to see under the microscope because of uh, the refractive index inside and outside the cell are now the same. Um, and uh, this means that uh, you indeed sometimes should be able to see less cells under the microscope because once the cell has broken open, then um, the liquid inside and outside have the same refractive index um, and it's more difficult to see. But again, that is not really a good way to, to do a, that's more th theoretical, okay, what I'm just saying. Um, it's not a good way to actually determine um, whether, um, when you see a cell, whether it's alive or, de or dead, because maybe um, the cell is already dead, but it's still intact um, and you're still able to see it, or maybe, um, yeah, it, it's, it's not a safe uh, way in any case, yeah. So uh, in, uh, in, in short uh, words, uh, do, um, do boil your food and because you also mentioned here uh, smoking, uh, when you are smoking uh, a fish for example, what happens is that the smoke uh, substances and particles actually go into the meat and they actually also kill off uh, bacteria. So smoking um, the, um, is, uh, is actually, uh, uh, if, it done, if it's done properly and with all of the other things uh, right, smoking actually is also a way to preserve uh, food um, and uh, so that's uh, not, smoking is not the same as freezing it and thawing it. Smoking uh, food actually is, is a way to, uh, to preserve it, okay? So um, that's uh, simply also something that I wanted to mention. I mean, I don't know if I already mentioned all of the, um, the issues here that I wanted to, to uh, talk about. Yeah, and there's another thing that I just want to mention. Um, if you want to test it yourself, whether freezing actually is able to kill, for example, yogurt bacteria, there's one thing that you uh, can do, and that's something you can test out, and you don't even need a microscope for that. And what you do is, is uh, when you boil milk, you first boil milk, you let it cool down a little bit, and then you add a spoonful of yogurt, and you keep it in a warm place, and then this way you're making new yogurt, okay? 
Um, as a matter of fact, uh, what you're doing is when you're adding a spoonful of fresh yogurt, you're inoculating the milk with the yogurt bacteria and then they grow and they convert the rest of the milk uh, to yogurt. Now what you can do is, is you can of course take uh, this spoonful of yogurt and freeze it yourself for three days and then see if this spoonful of yogurt is still able to act as a starter culture for making new yogurt. If it is able to act as a starter culture, uh, then of course uh, is, this shows that uh, um, there were still enough bacteria left uh, over who, uh, which are were able to um, cause the rest of the milk to start fermenting. Okay, So that is a, actually a very simple uh, experiment that you can do. You have two containers of milk. Um, one of them you add a spoonful of yogurt which is fresh but has not been frozen. The other one you add a spoonful you know, of yogurt that has been frozen and then you see if the yogurt develops in the same, uh, same speed. And if it does not, then this actually shows that the freezing might have had an uh, impact uh, on the number of bacterial cells. But I think uh, uh, because bacteria start to grow exponentially, um, the difference that you might see might not be very large because very quickly um, the number of bacteria will start to grow exponentially and, and even those uh, which are left over in the frozen yogurt, um, even they will quickly uh, grow and reproduce in, to such an extent that they might have soon caught up with a yogurt that was uh, not frozen. Uh, okay, uh, side issues. I wish you all the best. Happy micro partners as always. Please do leave your comments um, below uh, for further questions and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.